I'm at the Down to Earth project on the Gower Peninsula in South Wales, and this episode of the A to Z of Bushcraft is S for Sustainability. One subject that's been discussed a lot in survivalist and bushcraft circles over the recent years is the potential for a massive scale change in the way we live. And this could be a result of global warming or potentially something like peak oil, where our oil reserves become unsustainable and the effect on society is detrimental. Now, at the Down to Earth project, we've been looking at different ways in which we can adapt the way we live to use the minimum of natural resources and to generate our own electricity, as well as different methods of sustainably building using natural materials that are available close to where you live, and also growing your own food. So by learning some of these skills and adapting them with the same philosophy that we use in bushcraft about adapting to your environment, then we should be able to survive anything. If, for instance, the supermarkets couldn't be resupplied for whatever reason, natural disaster, all these sorts of things, you'd, you'd be able to produce a lot of the food that you'd need. That's right, yeah, we produce our own food over there, the organic garden, and we also have our own pigs here, rare breed pigs. So yeah, we're pretty uh, self-reliant with food production as well. So just behind us, we've got all these PV panels, photovoltaic panels. Can you tell us a bit about those as well? Yeah, it's a five kilowatt system. We had it installed last summer, so it's been in for nearly a year. And the idea is to provide a demonstration of how viable PV technology is. And we actually produce at least twice as much as we use. So we export the excess electricity to the national grid and they pay us in return. But a lot of people are surprised at the fact that actually PV, solar technology for electricity, is actually really viable for self-reliance. So we anticipate making payback on that system within about five years. That's fantastic. And you've also got a hot water system as well. That's right, just behind it, on the gable end of the barn, there's solar hot water technology, and that powers all our hot water for hand washing, for the shower, and for washing the dishes. And we want to put in a borehole as well, so that we source all our own drinking water from our site as well. We already collect our rainwater, and we use that for the pigs and for the garden. But we want to start, yeah, having our own water supply, which we then UV treat for drinking. So no one's prepared to give up their TV or to return back to living in caves, but we can adopt sustainable methods of living that will enable us to still live the modern lives that we have and in a way that's going to cause less damage to the environment. So Ray, right. what got you into this in the first place? Uh, I just randomly went on a straw bale building course and just fell in love with it instantly and thought, well, this is what I want to do. So pursued it like mad. That's fantastic. And uh, what, what do you know of the history of it? Uh, straw bale building was started in, in Nebraska in the, about the late 19th century, so the 18, end of the 1800s, when the straw bale making machine was first invented and the settlers were moving further and further west and had nothing to build with on the plains. And, but they did grow crops and had straw bales, so they just started building houses, basically using the straw bales as building blocks. They didn't have any kind of timber framing or anything, they just had load-bearing straw with roofs on, and they discovered that the houses were really warm and cosy. So straw's been used for a long, long time, it's just that the baling machine hadn't been invented. So Mark, tell me, what inspired you to start the project? Uh, Down to Earth Project has been set up to work with some of the most disadvantaged community groups we have in this area. And we work with a lot of disaffected young people and adults from a range of disadvantaged backgrounds. And it's a practical centre for sustainability and natural building. And we're a not-for-profit educational organisation, so we offer lots of various uh, educational programmes looking at a range of practical sustainability solutions. But with the populations that we have on the planet now, and our increased use of natural resources such as oil, I think it's time we started looking at how we can adapt some of these sustainability principles to the way we live in our normal day-to-day -day lives. Where the wind blows, where the river meets the sea, I'll be waiting for the day when you come back to me. I'll be waiting.